29. Oh, now we are. Now we are. We are live. Coming to you live on Facebook. <laughs> okay. Almost there. We'll wait until 8.30 then we start. Okay. <clears throat> In a few seconds. Oh, we're almost there. <clears throat> Okay, shall we begin, Nastri? Yes. Okay, so um, welcome everyone to the second episode of our Connecting the Dots series. My name is Melinda. I'm a speech therapist and also a volunteer with Aphasia SG. This series is brought to you by Aphasia SG, and we hope to help people watching from wherever you are to connect the dots when it comes to things like brain injury, um, aphasia, you know, our healthcare system, speech therapy, and you know, anything in between, basically. So on this episode, we're very honored to have with us tonight, Nasri. Hi. <laughs> Nasri is an enthusiastic volunteer, enthusiastic volunteer with Aphasia SG um, by volunteering at our Chit Chat Cafe sessions. And he also helps us by lending us his talent and skills as an illustrator. He not only helps to create impactful infographics and content, which is easy to understand, he also helps us to design limited edition merchandise. But what you may not know about Nazri is that he suffered a stroke two years ago and was unable to speak um, in his first few weeks after uh, Nazri has aphasia. So to, on, on, this, on, on the episode today, Nazri will be sharing with us you know, about his stroke, his aphasia journey, and his hope for the future. So let's welcome Nazri. Hi. Hi, Nazri. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hi. Um, shall we just start with an introduction? Would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, my name is Nazri and I am a volunteer at Aphasia SG. Um, and I had a stroke um, somewhere around two years ago. Uh, it's actually on the 11th of October in 2018. And yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, so just really sh like uh, a few days after your second year anniversary, you you were sharing with us. So um, maybe uh, so 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 it's been since it's been about two years since your stroke. Would you like yeah. us? Would you like to bring us to maybe that day? You know when when you had your stroke. What what happened? Okay, so on that mm -hmm. day, um, I well, it depends on. Should I start from before um, I got the stroke or should I just move on after I got my stroke? Uh, yeah, it's up, it's up to you. You, you can go um, a little bit, maybe just a little bit before. Just a little okay. Bit. <laughs> so anyway, um, I was uh, trying to um, take a break from work on that day. Um, just like, you know, like an ordinary person who just want to take a um, uh, leave from work on that day just to rest um, because I I don't get sick that often. So what yeah. happened was um, when I woke up, uh, I only had like a few minutes um, when I was walking and then I just went blank. I mean, it's like I was unconscious. Mm -hmm. And that was a time where I was um, sent to the uh, Changi General Hospital at the ICU um, and I woke up like on the third day after ICU and mm -hmm. I don't know what happened to me. Apparently, I was told that um, I am a, uh, I had hemorrhage stroke. That is where the um, blood vessel um, in my brain burst and it just bleed in my brain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It sounds like it was uh, uh, an, an event that uh, happened very, very suddenly. Yes. Right? Yeah. So what what happened after? Because you, you were also telling us that you had a lot of difficulties with um, talking the first few days. Oh, yes. 
So what mm-hmm. happened when, okay, so after I, um, I am discharged, I mean, after I was discharged uh, from the ICU, um, I started my recovery. So initially, I couldn't speak, I couldn't talk, um, I, I, I was just um, trying to figure out where am I, what's happening. Mm-hmm. So I felt, I mean, it felt like I was in a dream. So I'm just waiting to like um, fully awake and um, see if I will be back to normal. Um, mm. But it didn't happen, of course. Um, and I, yeah. I and I couldn't. Um, I was bedridden for at least a week, and I couldn't um, speak. I couldn't. I, 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 I'm just like lost. Yeah, yeah. And and how did you how did you realize that when like how, what what does having an aphasia mean to you then, right? And and what does you know it mean to you now that you're two years. Um, after having your stroke? Well, um, aphasia, uh, firstly, it is, um, I wasn't informed about if, um, aphasia. Um, I was just um, uh, being informed that I need to go for a speech therapy. Um, okay. And um, it was like more um, a speech therapy that is, um, that I have to um, go, f- like I have to learn how to, improve my communication the way I mm. speak like start from the very beginning of learning and um, it was um, like a like I had to practice how to talk every day while I was in the hospital and also um, mm. uh, after I was discharged from the mm. hospital I still continue um, uh, going through the therapy um, throughout the whole year. Mm. So then, after you had... Oh, so, 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 oh sorry. so sorry, please continue. No, it's, it's all right. Okay, <laughs> sorry. So you were saying you, you've been having speech therapy and, and that, that seemed to have help um, mm. with your aphasia, w- w- yes. would it be right to say? Yes. That the speech therapy would have helped? Yeah. Yes. Um, and so apart from speech therapy, um, have you what else have you gone through in terms of you know, after coming, I would presume after the ICU, you went to a general ward and then from there you went home. Would, would that be right? Um, yes. So I spent about um, one and a half month in the hospital and throughout um, uh, the um, doctors and nurses were um, helping me with um, with my speech the way i communicate um also my um moto skill yes yeah like the movement of my body and such so um it has uh improved by the days that um you know it's like uh with all the practices and exercises so it does help uh during recovery so um, I was able, like for aphasia, like the speech wise, I'm, um, I was able to start talking and like remembering what I have been um, learning in terms of the language that I use. So mm. I start um, remembering those um, words and practice in terms of uh, talking. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so it sounds like apart from, you know, staying in hospital, uh, you know, as once you were out in, you know, once you were back home, mm-hmm. um, did you have to return to the hospital again for any kind of procedures or surgery? So um, when they test me with my motor skill and the way I move, so that has improved a lot. So mm-hmm. um, I don't really have to go through those um, recovery, but in terms yeah. of speaking, I still have problems in um, completing my sentences. I um, I still I, I I was I was stuck at certain words. Um, mm. I mean, it's like even basic words. Uh, I just couldn't seems to 
delivering, like communicate. It's like I know the words, but I just couldn't. I, I mean, it's just so difficult for me to just get mm. it out. Even like from my voice, I just couldn't. Mm. Yeah, so I have to um, still continue with the uh, speech therapy um, mm -hmm. uh, throughout uh, for about a year and a half months. Yeah. So I think previously you were also sharing with us that not you that apart from going back for speech therapy, which is what you mentioned, you're going back for now. Um, there was actually um, this point this point in time where you had to do your cranial plasty, so to to actually have that piece of um, your your skull or, yes. or you know put back. Yeah. So I was just wondering whether you could share a little bit of that with us, and if you're okay, we can actually show. Um, a picture of um, of that, you know. Uh, oh, not a that, problem. Of, of your battle oh, scars. <laughs> okay, so um, what happened when I had stroke? Um, they had to mm. open up my um, the left side of my skull, so that mm. the uh, brain um, it is allowed to expand um, and not being squeezed in the um, in in my skull. So. Um, that was something that I just cannot forget. It is something that I um, asked like so many questions, how if, if this even exists? Um, so that was a time where I was trying to um, be calm, you know, it's like not to get um, agitated um, about these kind of circumstances. It is something that I will never forget about the um, uh, cranotomy. I think that's what it's called. Uh, so to take it out is a craniotomy, yeah. Yeah, but to right. put it back in is yeah. your cranioplasty. Like so that, um, so yeah. the, for the um, uh, cranioplasty, um, I have to wait for about five months um, so that um, my brain is still recovering until the next process of um, putting in the uh, cranioplasty. Yeah. So I'm sure the doctors had to wait until uh, things were stable uh, before they could actually um, put that part of your skull back, right? Mm -hmm. To make sure that the pressures were okay and, and you weren't like compressing your brain again. Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. So um, what... So, so I, I remember you telling us, you know, mentioning that, you know, it was actually really difficult because um, there was a lot of difficulty in remembering certain words. Yes. Um, in re like in, in, in trying to learn something new all over yeah. again. How, if, you know, if, if you were to meet a person with aphasia, like yeah. some, someone who just had a stroke, how yeah. would you describe having an aphasia? I will um, tell them about my, how... I learned, I mean, the first thing that I remember uh, that um, I learned about aphasia or the difficulty in my speech, um, it was um, when the occupational therapist was showing me um, images of fruits and it, um, she showed me a, um, a picture of a banana, an orange, and the other one, I think it was an apple. So um, I got apple and orange, right? But I just cannot even say that it's banana. I was going through like, um, I'm trying to pronounce it, even the word B, it's just not coming out. So that was the first time um, that I had this problem. And, um, mm. and I was trying, I mean, it made me feel that I'm stuck. And, and I just cannot mm. do it. And this, um, and when the therapist helped me with, you know, um, to say, oh, it's a banana. And the first thing I realized that I don't even think that I have heard of this word, but I know it's banana. Ooh. Yeah. So yeah. that was um, the time where I believe that I had a speech problem to begin with. Mm. And um, yeah, so that is when, you know, I try, I mean, it's like I was trying, uh, I mean, I tried to say the word um, banana again the following day for the, uh, for the um, I mean, during this therapy and I just couldn't. So I mm -hmm. kept practicing 
um, the little words that I can't even um, deliver or pronounce it. Mm. And um, yeah. it got better as everyday exercising. So I believe that um, for a person who encountered such um, experience in terms of even to say the word, um, it can be improved. Mm. That's great. And, and that's a very, um, that's a very uh, powerful message coming from a person who has gotten better with his, with his speech and his communication mm. with therapy. So, um, so, so how would you, do, do you still have words that you find difficult now? Last uh, time you were banana I would words, say... not now. Sorry? <laughs> so last time it was, you know, first few days it was like, wow, you really couldn't get the word yeah. banana. What about now? Do you have like just some words that you cannot get, cannot get? Oh, grammar. Definitely grammar. Ooh. I think the, um, when, when like words that I hardly use it in a conversation. Um, yeah, I think um, some words are just very difficult for me to even say it. Um, but I just have to practice um, or read or talk. I think that is very, very important. Like um, mm. I cannot even, uh, I mean, especially like medical term, um, stroke hemorrhagic, okay? Because I say it every day. Like I try to practice, yeah. I try to get familiar with it. It's just like, um, to me, it feels like learning a language. I mean, mm. I have mm. learned um, French, um, German, uh, Cantonese. I still, I mean, it's like, I, I, I still have that difficulty in um, remembering some of these words that I have not used for a long time. Yeah. So you, are, you, you liken it to actually learning a new language, but the, the, the difficult part is that this is a language that you have known all your life. Yes. And, and so now, you know, it's, it's really challenging because what then do you use, right? So, so I yeah. think it's, I, I oh, um, we've actually got a, a couple of questions. So I'm just going gonna, I'm, I'm to like um, divert our little conversation here um, to a couple of questions that have come in. Um, so Hazira is asking, uh, how does that part of your skull that was taken out feel now that it is back in? Do you feel like it is different? You know, um, do you get any pain from it? Um, definitely. Um, initially, it was something that I cannot believe. I mean, it's like that is from the mental side. Uh, um, in terms of the, um, the physics, um, I do feel that it was very painful um, while it's recovering. So every time I would just... Um, uh, discuss with the doctors and the nurses, um, you know, it's like just to um, keep me more calm about the pain that um, I was going through. So it, it was painful it. when when they, yeah, well, um, does it feel different is, is another part of the question. Like, that, does it feel like it's a different part of you now? Or initially, now that it's gone in, it's okay. Okay, initially when it's still on the um, recovering uh, period, I do feel it is different. Like, you know, it's like, oh, um, part of the skull is plastic mm, and screws. Hmm. Then after that, you know, it's like when I'm just getting used to it, like as if it doesn't exist, but I don't want to think that it doesn't exist. I, it's my brand new life basically. Yeah, your second life, as you call it, yes. sometimes you, I, I remember you saying that to us, yes. that it is your second life. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So embracing that part of you that is now you, right? Yes, definitely. Great. Oh, thank you. And, and thanks, Azira, for that question. Um, we've got uh, another question from Vincent. Uh, was it easy to explain aphasia to people who aren't aware of the condition? as in to caregivers or the patient? Mm, I guess it can be anybody. So because what, what you're doing also is, you know, um, and, and later we'll probably get to this part of the work that you are so passionate about is to tell people who don't know about aphasia more about aphasia 
and you use your illustrations and and, and your skill as a yeah. designer to to actually make it easy to understand. So yeah. I think maybe what Vincent is asking is it easy to to then explain to people? Oh uh, well, okay. About um, first thing first, I think to learn about um, the medical terms is um, is not easy. Um, but of course, because it is my journey, I have to learn what and how stroke even exists. Um, in fact, the word stroke has a lot of meaning even when I, I mean, before my incident, um, because I designed, we have the term of stroke as well. So <laughs> um, I think um, uh, in order to learn more about um, my uh, speech therapy, um, and aphasia, I think um, it is to explain to people like in a, sim in a simpler way, um, it is my um, speech therapy that I'm having. Um, it can be something that I forgot or it could be some, um, something that um, when I had a, a problem, um, even to deliver, even to say it. So, I will try to explain it as simple as possible. So, so um, I, I, I can definitely see that it would be challenging, right? If you have yeah. like difficulties with um, words for you to then try and use words yes. to, to explain, you know, what, what aphasia is to people. But I think that is, that is why we, we, are, we are so proud to, to call you, you know, our our brother in arms when we are <laughs> advocating for aphasia, um, right. because you do such wonderful work. And and if I were to bring you know our our, our watchers and listeners into some of the um some some of the events that you have um joined us with, um so one of the one of the events that I really remember was sometime um last year I think in November when we did uh, a, a a film screening. And, and I remember, you know, at the end, we were actually sitting in front of, of an audience and you, you, were, you were explaining to, to people who were asking you questions about your journey, mm -hmm. about your aphasia. And we've got some, we, we've got a picture here, um, you know, showing, I, I don't know whether people will see you, but you know, uh -huh. you are in the corner there. <laughs> yeah, the in one black. in the black t-shirt. Um, yeah, and, and, and you were there and you were sharing about your journey. And, and, I, and, and, and I know that this is what you, you mentioned to us as well. This is like your newfound purpose where mm -hmm. you, are, you, 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 are, you, 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 you are not shy, right, to share about what has happened with you because you, want, you don't want people to be um, confused. You, know, mm -hmm. you want them to be aware. You want them to, to know, you know that you know, maybe this is part of the journey. Yeah. You know, um, what else can they expect? So, yeah. so why don't you, you, you share with us a little bit about um, where, you know, in, in your journey, you know, who else, who, who have you, who did you feel have, has helped you, you know, because now you are in a position that you're trying, mm -hmm. you're, you're helping people, right, yeah. in your journey, who did you feel helped you? Um, okay, um, I would say doctors and nurses who have um, mm. uh, helped me with recovery, um, speech therapists, the, um, uh, the physical therapist, uh, who else? The, um, the, uh, I cannot remember what is the uh, occupational therapist. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's like these people who has helped me, I think, um, uh, makes me even want to um, let other people, like help other people uh, who has gone through the same um, journey. Um, because initially I wasn't like, I'm not exactly sure of where, like what is my journey going to be um, until I met the people in aphasia, um, in aphasia SG. And uh, oh, sorry, uh, at the Chit Chat Cafe, and I realized that you know um, the my severity uh, and my recovery was uh, has improved um, well. Uh, in fact, um, quicker than I expected it, and um, 
I want to, to give it back to people who need um, all this kind of encouragement and information about um, my journey. Yeah. And so for those who don't know, Nazri actually joined us, um, I think in August last year, we were saying, um, and he joined us as a participant first at Chit Chat Cafe. Yes. But, you know, like like he mentioned, uh, he, he felt this sense of purpose in trying to also give back to the people in, in the community of um, like uh, volunteers, people with aphasia, as well as their caregivers. So now he is like, our brother in arms, and he <laughs> he has joined us as a volunteer um, at Aphasia SG. So we're very, very, very proud um, and, and very happy that he's actually joined us because he's very, very talented. Um, so apart from, you know, uh, being a volunteer with, you know, Chit Chat Cafe, uh, he has also actually shared, um, he, he's also done um, shared the sharing of his story uh, through um, this. Uh, so, so June was Aphasia Awareness Month. Um, and he actually did this human library. Uh, um, he, he volunteered for the human library. Uh, and that was where he actually shared his story um, with people, basically. Um, yeah, and, and, and so that was, I, and, and I think Nazri, you would also say that this is part of, you know, how you would want to share your story, right? Yes. How, how was that experience, actually? Did you, was it, was it scary? Was it? I don't know. Nerve no, it was fun. It was fun. <laughs> oh, it's fun. Uh, it's really awesome. fun. Um, I guess um, I didn't really feel that stressful. Uh, like I mean, it's like I I I mean, it it, it didn't really um make me uncomfortable. In fact, um, I really want to help uh people to understand um aphasia uh to begin with. Um, in fact, I didn't even know the um, this word exists. But um, if I can help, sure, why not? Um, I will do my very best based on the journey that I'm going through. Yeah, that's so awesome. So how do you stay positive? That is what I want to know. Every time I see you, you're always smiling, uh, <laughs> always cheerful. How? How do you stay so positive and motivated? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, well, of course, I had my... Um, my not so positive time and that was mm. um when i had i mean just after i had stroke because um i was trying to figure out why yeah. um yeah why how when which mm. one and you know it's like there are so many questions but i realized that it doesn't really make me to move forward you know it's like i was yeah. just stuck there like, you know, I'm like mm. too stressed in going back to normal. So um, mm. then I tell myself, I'm just going to um, be calm, be more positive and just move forward for this journey of mine. And if it helps other people, I will feel even more blessed. Yeah. That's great. And, and I think I want to share with everybody about how you've been helping other people. And it's not just through um, your sharing and the sharing of your story, which is, which is very, very powerful coming from like a first hand experience. I, I think people with aphasia um, definitely will appreciate that. But I also want to share with people um, how your drawings and your graphics have actually um, journeyed with us. So, so um, we're just going to show uh, a couple of uh, pictures from your IG, okay, <laughs> sorry, uh, we took from your IG, we declare, okay. <laughs> That's all right. We took, from, uh, we, we took the pictures from there. Um, so if, if you're interested to follow Nazri on IG, his Instagram handle is, as you can see, uh, illustration by Nazri, please follow him because he's very, very talented and you've got a lot of official related things there. Okay, so back to the program. Um, right, so um, you've, you've got some sort of, uh, so, so one year, one, your, at your one year anniversary, right? These, these mm -hmm. were some of the um, graphics or infographics that you, you, you came up with. Um, what led you to, you know, do something like that at your, to, to, to publish it actually? Well, um, actually it started mm. even before my first year after I got stroke. Um, initially, mm. I was just trying, um, or rather I was having this um, recovery period where I tell myself not to do anything that is very stressful. So I was just 
you know, um, I, I, I wanted to know if um, the stroke affects my skill of, mm. um, of designing. So um, I love to design and I like to um, just do illustration uh, when I was free, even before I had stroke. So um, I just want to make sure that I still uh, know how to use my, I mean, the, all the apps that I've been using, uh, the Adobe mm -hmm. apps. And um, I started with that. And then I was like saying that, okay, maybe I should um, uh, state all those words that I have been learning about, like all those medical terms, like stroke, yeah. hemorrhagic. So I just want to make sure that I remember these words um, initially. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, it's like, um, whatever that I've gone through, I just want to make sure that I'm more familiar with it. So that is like um, helping myself with my own way of um, remembering the, the new terms or the new words that mm -hmm. I'm learning. And um, yeah, so it started with um, some cartoons and some words, but based on my journey, and then um, I made it like um, an anniversary thing. So like, um, so I, uh, when I completed my first year, um, I tried to um, describe how I went through the journey. And um, apparently there are some people who, um, uh, who have gone through the same journey, um, contacted me and then um, was thanking me. And I feel blessed because um, I'm not trying to be popular about this, but I just want to um, teach people who have gone through the same uh, circumstances. And so, so, so leading from this, we've got a question from our audience. Um, Bryna is asking, uh, we know that aphasia affects speech and communication. Does it affect um, your design work is what uh, Bryna wants to know. Oh, no, it doesn't. Apparently, um, when I was testing all my skills, um, actually, I'm sorry. Um, initially, oh. I, um, <laughs> I was trying uh, to use the app on my laptop. And I mean, in terms of the skill, uh, skill wise um initially it was okay did i do this you know is this the so i was just you know like ah. trying to remember what i did initially it was yeah. um difficult then it picks up eventually it's like trying to remember oh i did this um like this is how i do it and this is how um i design on online yeah did, did it affect um, the movement of your of your right hand? Because I, I know a lot of people actually use the right hand for the things like the mouse. So did it did you find that that affected? Um, like like I did your stroke uh, affect that? Well, initially, um, mm. of course, I couldn't move, and some of like mm. um, I was bedridden. Um, by the time I. Uh, I mean, it's like, but I've improved um, quicker mm. than the way I talk. So by the time I was designing, it's just like, um, it's the same. No problem. Uh, yeah. uh, the same movement that I've done before. So okay. I, um, the skill yeah. um, Great. Uh, is good. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So apart from, apart from that series that you did, um, as as you know to help yourself like you mentioned mm -hmm. to remember the words and the new terms that you learn I think yeah. um, what we're also showing now is um, a B stroke in ABC so I thought this was a really interesting and fun I don't know whether we can call it fun because yeah. stroke is sounds like a very mm, topic but but it, 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 it to me it, it seemed like quite a fun way of um, telling people right like what yeah. stroke is in ABCs yeah. in, in very um, simple terms and, and I think this is something that you, you mentioned that you would like to uh, be using so that more people can understand aphasia and stroke and brain injury a bit better, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe you want to like tell us a little bit about this, um, this series that you did? Okay, I did this series because um, I wanted to 
I I wanted to um, uh, put down the things that I have learned about stroke. Um, mm-hmm. uh, whether what I mean, it's like I I have not even heard of this word aphasia, and so. Mm-hmm. Um, I start to go to the internet to understand what it is. So I start writing down A is for aphasia and I write down what I understood from the internet and then I just design it. And that goes with B, uh, I believe I stated um, B for brain stroke, I think. Did I? Use the brain stroke, but anyway, um, whatever I, 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 stroke, <laughs> I just, I mean, it's like I just designed it. So just uh, this brain, is attack, brain attack, brain uh, attack, uh, brain attack. So I don't know mm. about brain attack, and I try to understand it. So basically, whatever that I've learned, um, uh, I just designed it just to remind me this is it. You know, it's like this mm. is the meaning of this. Um, yeah, yeah, it's just like trying to learn the medical terms. <laughs> in a simpler form. And I think in and, and I think in you trying to help yourself to understand and, and, and to kind kind of make sense of it in your head mm-hmm. by publishing it, it's actually doing more good because now more people, you know, have access to it. They can see, you know, the work that you have done. Yes. And because you've made it so easy to understand, actually I feel like more people understand and, and, <laughs> and are aware, you know. So 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 that's fantastic. Yeah, I mean so it's I like to, okay, yeah. I I didn't really expect much. I mean, it's like, this is actually more for, um, for me to um, uh, maintain my design skills. And also, you know, it's like, I just want to talk about stroke, um, just learn more about it. So yeah. this was actually more for my interest. Um, apparently, um, it goes um, uh, internationally as well. So... I'm, but Ooh. I'm blessed that, you know, it's like people awesome. um, appreciate it. Yeah. And, and I think I also want to highlight, you know, that it's not just, it's not just the general public that are, that are benefiting from your design skills and work. <laughs> um, so if everybody can see, we've got, we've got this um, Aphasia SG choir uh, and, and it's a logo. Uh, so Nazri actually got volunteered <laughs> and he volunteered uh, um, to help us design our Aphasia SG choir uniform. So uh, you you know the next time you see someone spotting this uh, a shirt, a maroon shirt with this logo, you'll know. Hey, I know this designer, and you can go and show off a little bit how you know this designer. Um, yeah. So 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 Nazri doesn't just um, design for his own benefit that what like what he says he says this is for him but I say it's not just it's for everybody um, he's also he, he's also sharing his design skills with us you know by by designing the uniforms uh, for our aphasia SG choir so that's fantastic and thank you um, so uh, apart from designing you know merchandise designer mer- merchandise you know uh-huh. um, I, I'm sure everybody is also in the midst of you know the coronavirus pandemic. Um, at the start of the pandemic, um, I'm not sure whether anybody, uh, you know, I, I'm not sure whether anybody uh, got caught on to these um, little um, infographics by the WHO. But we felt like the information from there was was very very wordy, and it may not be something that a person with aphasia could really comprehend. So Nazri came in, you know, this is Nazri to the rescue, <laughs> he came in, and then he went right, guys. Let's you know make it easy to understand, you know, um, and 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 so this this is the this this is the series that he did um for us in March, uh, and I'm sh- this completely went viral. I I am very sure of it because it was really easy to understand. It was very catchy, you know, and it it brought home the message very very easily. Yeah, and and so this is not the end, huh? So this is like me uh, sharing with everybody about what Nazri has done. <laughs> Um, so apart from the COVID nineteen uh, uh, pandemic, the the info about it, um, he also helped us with aphasia awareness month. Um, he also helped when um, the general elections were were you know upon us. Um, yeah, and so so uh, like yep, yeah, like like you can see, he did a PWA polling guide series. So it went from it covered everything from how do you find out where your 
polling boot sta station is to you know how do you vote right and because we want to make sure that everybody has a voice inclusive um he also designed this uh, a little card you know so that the person with aphasia can go look you know i've i've got an aphasia i need help with x y or z and and that is how you know some of our uh, uh, participants uh, could actually, you know, they used it and then they got to vote, so their voice got heard. And I was going to say something a little bit apolitical, but I shall stop. Okay, so back to Nazri. <laughs> okay, yeah, so um, okay, so, so I'll, I'll just go to one of the questions um, that we've uh, that we're getting on our Facebook. Just one yeah. second, let me get to it. Um, Okay, so Debbie is asking. So I think you mentioned that you you learned French, German, and Cantonese, Le Homa, yeah. right? Um, did did you have difficulties with the other languages, and did therapy in English help with them as well? You mean other languages, as in? Mm. Um... So like the French, the German, but you did most of your therapy in English. So yeah. did that help? Your other languages? Oh, um, I've not tried though. <laughs> Ooh, parlez not, français um, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but I think yeah, I mean it's like um things like bonjour. I I it is back uh to my mind. So it's it's um, uh in terms of pronouncing it, I've not uh I've not uh tried it. Yeah. Okay, this is where you and I practice, lah. My I also haven't <laughs> practiced my French in a while. It's okay. We can laugh at we can laugh at each other later. <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay, so thanks, Debbie, for that question. Um, a, all right. So apart from apart from all these things that you've been doing, you know, for Fiji SG, volunteering your precious time, um, are you, what what else are you doing right now to keep yourself busy? Uh, keep myself. Busy. Busy, yeah. <laughs> well, um, hobbies, hobbies. Uh. I, okay. Um, so I just focus on things that um, is more therapeutic as opposed to like before where, you know, it's like you mm. work so hard and um, yeah. yeah. So for me, um, volunteering is one of them. And um, I do freelance instead of full-time mm. work. So um, yeah, and now I'm into planting, like plants. Oh. So yeah, so yeah. Um, uh, I try to balance my um, daily work. Um, try not to be too um, too busy doing stuff. Um, even mm. the things that I love to do, um, I just make sure that I balance it with my um, my health. Uh, mm -hmm. and yeah yeah okay so planting that that's very very interesting I think is, is this a very is this a new like um because of the COVID situation everybody yeah. because they need to stay at home is, is that something from this like coronavirus thing or is it even before you were already you know getting into planting and plants no it's um apparently it's um popular right now <laughs> yeah it is it is <laughs> yes i mean like uh, with um plants and um uh i mean to grow them and you know it's like um this is another story altogether i mean it's like okay. but it is very um how do you say that word for being famous um it is uh um where everybody is talking about it and doing it like all this plant oh, oh, trending yeah is that the word trending yes trending ah. yeah <laughs> so yeah so i mean, it's like see these are the words that i may not necessarily mm. um come out from how i say it because mm. you know trending is something that i don't use that often but mm. um it is a good step for me to just keep practicing yeah and and i see what you were doing in trying to describe it yes. so um is is so is, is that one of your strategies that if let's say you go ah there's this word that i can't get but yes. i will try and describe it yeah mm -hmm. okay great 
Okay, so we've got a question from uh, Jesslyn. She's asking, have you ever explained aphasia to a child? And Ooh. if you have, how did you do it? No, I've not no? really um, oh. described. Um, mm. Yeah, aphasia. No, I, I um, or rather I don't have such experience because um, most of my friends don't have kids. <laughs> <laughs> Fair point. <laughs> if you had to, if you had to, yeah. um, how would you describe it to a child? Well, I will describe it as um, try to talk to me slowly. Don't talk mm -hmm. too fast. Um, I need time to understand. Um, yes. So okay. try to explain as simple as possible, but what I want to, I mean, the way to communicate with each other. Mm, okay, so just some quick tips that the child um, may be able to use when communicating with you, sounds like. Yeah. Yeah, okay. And, and so what about, so, so that is kind of explaining it to a child. And if I were to, and if I were to, you know, draw from that a little bit, um, what would you like to tell maybe some of the some of the people in the audience you know who have who either you know have been newly diagnosed with anaphasia or you know have had a brain injury recently do, do you have some like do you have any words of like encouragement word, wise words you know that you would like to share with them oh um, mm. I have spoken to uh, um, some of the um people who have aphasia um, and I, I mean, it's like, it depends on how severe that they have gone through. And um, to me, to understand their condition, it is good that I understand that um, like to some, I have to speak slowly. Some of them would have a difficulty in understanding um, the sentence that I was trying to say, which is too, um, how do I say it? Which is too, uh, either it's too quick or I didn't use like simple words. So that's how I learned from um, when I was talking to uh, people who have the same, um, mm -hmm. uh, the same condition. Yeah. So for yeah. people with the same condition, you would actually say, you know, it's it, it, it's a little bit different for everybody, yes. right? And so yeah. because of that, you would use some strategies that may apply to most people. Yeah. And also, okay. um, yeah. it is easier for me to speak to the person who, are, who is also going through um, the journey and um, they feel that, you know, it's like if they cannot remember the word, we'll just change mm -hmm. the next to the next um, topic. So yeah. it is, I mean, they feel comfortable as opposed to they need to still deliver that conversation mm. that they are supposed to convey. Yeah, so just moving on, you know, when yes. when, when, yeah. when it's just a bit, when, when just getting stuck. And, and I mm -hmm. think that's, that's the beauty of, you know, having a, a two-way conversation you know, because sometimes oh, yes. if you're, yeah, because it's yeah. no point, you know, if one person is stuck. Yes, yeah. I mean, it's just like, you know, it's a person with stressful. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's just like a person with aphasia will, um, or, sorry, just like a person without aphasia, talking to a person with yeah. aphasia, and they just have to wait for the sentence that this person is supposed to convey. So, it doesn't help. Um, it even make the situation more frustrating mm. okay so your advice is if let's say it gets a little bit too difficult be mm. more understanding and we yes. can actually just move on instead yeah. of forcing you know that that couple of last words out or that word yes. out oh definitely yeah. So, yeah. so yeah yeah so so i i think that's great advice because i think sometimes we maybe get a little bit too focused yeah. on certain things and but then we kind um, of lose sight yeah. I mean, it's a very common yeah. thing, not intentionally, but yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, we've got one question from Bryna, and uh, Bryna is asking, 
is the merchandise that you design available for purchase? Ooh, Ooh. business opportunity. Yes, support of Asia <laughs> SG. <laughs> I mean, like yep. for me, is um, it is from the voluntary point of view. Uh, yep. but if it's a business, please um contact. Evelyn. <laughs> oh, 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 okay. <laughs> so Eve will be your Eve will be your middleman. <laughs> yeah. So, if it helps to um, volunteer, yes. By all means. Cool. And we're so happy that we have your support. Um, I noticed that you were drinking from a mug just now that had this really, oh. really cute design. Do you want to show everybody what it is? Ah, it's so cute. Wait, hang on. Back is a bit back. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Eh, no, no. Eh, okay, okay, can, can, can. Yeah, that's so cute. So uh, is this available for, for for buying? Like, can people buy it if they want? Ah, uh, contact <laughs> Evelyn. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I love how you're like, you know, <laughs> making Eve the point of contact for this. <laughs> okay, so... um. Um, unfortunately, we we are kind of you know reaching the end of our time. Oh, you know, already here today. Yeah, already doesn't feel like that, right? So, um, hmm. any last words? Like you know, a- any last words before we go? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, okay. First and foremost, to those who are going through the um, post injury, have mm-hmm. a great recovery and move forward for better improvement. Um, be positive because you can do it. That is my message. Um, and last but not least, um, my wishes to Aphasia SG members and the volunteers, thank you from the bottom of my heart for the sincere help and also the encouragement to those who need them the most. So many thanks. Oh, thank you, Nazri. I mean, it's definitely a two-way thank you. It's not just (laughs) one way from you to us, but it's from us to you as well. Okay, so we've just got one last question. Oh, there's a question. Um, Yes. You can always send the question later. This one is for official SG, so this one I can answer. (laughs) So PLK is asking, how can members of public volunteer for Aphasia SG? Um, So we've got a website. Um, The website is www dot aphasia dot sg easy to remember so um check out our website we've got links um to our events uh and just a little pitch for our our our, our next episode um our next episode will be featuring one of our uh young uh our, our volunteers um shafika shafika uh had a stroke when she was uh, really really young so uh, she'll be sharing her story and her journey um, so yeah, remember to uh, tune in next week. Yes, yep. definitely. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Thanks everybody for joining and listening to us. And thank, thank you, you Nazmi, for sharing. Thank, thank you, you so much. Yep. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.